Over the weekend, many prominent fascists gathered at the Saudi-backed Live Golf Tournament, including former president-turned-insurrectionist and wannabe dictator Donald Trump, white supremacist propagandist Tucker Carlson, and proud Christian nationalist and QAnon conspiracy theorist Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, there were multiple photos of the throuple that went viral, and Marjorie Greene deliberately shared this particular image featuring her with Tucker Carlson and Donald Trump, adding, Man, what a time to be alive. You and yours... Versus me and mine. Oh, we talking teams? Oh, we talking teams? Oh, you switching sides? <laughs> <What? laughs> Want to come with me? Hashtag MAGA. And just look at the way that she's looking at Trump's face, like looking into his eyes as he's pointing aggressively towards her, gushing with happiness because she's just in his presence. And I want to juxtapose like that, the way she's looking at him with this picture of Donald Trump with no makeup, because that's what she's staring into. And I just love that that brings a smile to her face. Just love it. Now the crowd chanted, let's go, Brandon, because of course they did. And um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she was interviewed by Real America's Voice. I didn't know that this was a real news network. I thought that that was just like a segment on OAN or Newsmax. But apparently Real America News Network, uh, which sounds kind of racist. But either way, you know, that network decided to interview Marjorie Taylor Greene. And they asked her whether or not she would want to be Donald Trump's vice presidential candidate. And she said she would consider it at first, but by the end of the interview, as you're going to see, she talked herself into it. So what do you do with the fact that um, as people are starting to look forward to 2024, I think there's consensus, uh, uh, mostly among our audience anyway, and with most of the people that I've spoken with here, that Donald Trump needs to be the nominee and anybody else is sort of a distraction at this point. At least that's what I'm hearing from people. Um, but that I hear the words MTG mentioned a lot. Hello. As somebody who'd be a great running mate for Donald Trump. I just wonder what, what you do with that. Well, I, you know what? I think if he asked me, I would definitely give that some strong consideration. Okay. I love President Trump. I, I never, I never hide that fact. I think he's wonderful. I have a great relationship with him. I talk to him frequently. I'm, gr I'm so thankful for him and his family, as we all are. And I defend him all the time. I, I swear I would, I would fight for that man because he fought for us. And that's the kind of president we need back. And if, if, if he were to ask me, of course, I, I would be honored. It's really interesting to me that she thinks that she's qualified to be the vice president. I mean, that woman would be one heart attack away from the White House, from the presidency itself. That should horrify everyone because I believe that as bad as Donald Trump is, as big of a threat to democracy as he is, Marjorie Taylor Greene is actually worse. And I'll explain why throughout the course of this video. But would Donald Trump actually choose her? And the answer, I think, is yes. Because consider why he possibly chose Mike Pence back in 2016. One criticism of Donald Trump, even though he was beloved by the GOP base, is that he wasn't sufficiently religious enough. So in order to kind of unite the Republican Party, uh, unite possibly the libertarian and the, you know, evangelical factions. He chose somebody who was a fundamentalist Christian in Mike Pence. But the problem with Mike Pence and why Trump wouldn't choose him again is because Mike Pence wouldn't go along with Trump's lies about the 2020 election. Marjorie Taylor Greene, however, she fits both of those, uh, those needs for Donald Trump. She checks all the boxes. Not only is she an insurrectionist, but she's also sufficiently religious. In fact, she self-identifies as a Christian nationalist. Proudly so. In fact, I believe she's selling shirts that say proud Christian nationalist. And this story is from last week, but let's go over it again. As Newsweek explains, Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican representative from Georgia, has defended her endorsement of Christian nationalism after the term she is a Nazi trended on Twitter. Greene was accused on Monday of being a Nazi by Twitter users commenting on her defense of Christian nationalism while speaking on Saturday at the Turning Point USA Student Action Summit in Tampa, Florida. The Georgia Republican later shared a clip of her speech alongside the comment, nationalist isn't a bad word, because it means you care about your country, sure. Quote, I am being attacked by the godless left because I said I am a proud Christian nationalist, Green said in a statement sent to Newsweek, which was also shared on Twitter. These evil people are calling me a Nazi because I proudly love my country and my God. The left has shown us exactly who they are. They hate America, they hate God, and they hate us. That's actually true. Many of those who commented on the she is a Nazi trending topic said that they knew the phrase was referring to Green before even looking at the related tweets, me too, actually. Christian nationalism has been heavily associated with far-right extremism in the United States in recent years, including white supremacy. 
Now, you can argue that she's either being dumb or disingenuous, but it's a distinction without a difference. It really doesn't matter. The reason why people are calling her a Nazi after she's saying that she's a proud Christian nationalist is because Christian nationalism means that you support a country that excludes people who aren't Christian. That includes Jewish people. That includes non-Christians. It means you subjugate marginalized minorities, deviants such as the LGBTQ plus community, and it's inherently a fascistic ideology. But she's saying, I'm a proud Christian nationalist, but simultaneously she's mad that people are calling her a Nazi in response. I mean, she's probably just stupid, but Andrew Torba, CEO of right-wing social media website Gab, is also a self-proclaimed Christian nationalist, and he admits that it's an inherently fascistic ideology saying that Jewish people and non-Christians cannot be part of the conservative movement, saying, quote, we are going to build a coalition of Christian nationalists, of Christians, of Christian candidates at the state, local, and federal levels, and we're going to take this country back for the glory of God. So that's why people were calling you a Nazi, Marjorie Taylor Greene, in response to you saying that you're a proud Christian nationalist. Because it doesn't just mean that you're a proud Christian. It means that you want a state to the exclusion of everyone who is not Christian, including Jewish people, non-religious people, including people who you describe as sexual deviants like the LGBTQ plus community. That's why they're calling you a fascist, because in order to achieve what you want, a Christian nationalist state, you have to purge people who aren't Christian from the state. It's an inherently fascistic ideology that you're proud to be part of. But Tihi, I'm just a proud Christian. Sure. Sure you are. So when you're a Christian nationalist, you don't believe in pluralism. You don't believe in democracy, because what is the point of democracy if God has given you a divine mandate to rule by his authority? So what's the point of voting when you already know what God wants you to do? No need to elect representatives to do what the people want. You know what God wants, because he told you. So you cut out the middleman, and you just stop electing people, and you just rule based on what the Bible tells you to do, or what God tells you to do. So, that's why Christian nationalism is incredibly horrifying. So, as dumb as Marjorie Taylor Greene may be, even if she's currently a national laughingstock, don't think that she couldn't actually become the president or the vice president because that's kind of where we're at. Let me remind you that she's at this live Saudi-backed golf tournament with Tucker Carlson, who mainstreamed the white replacement theory. And his show is the most popular cable news show on television. So even if it's easy to dismiss these people because they are clowns, think of what happened when everyone dismissed Donald Trump in 2016. So yes, Marjorie Taylor Greene is an imbecile. She's a clown, but she's a clown who could actually get real power in this country. And she's a sitting member of Congress, so she already controls the levers of power to an extent. But what she wants is more power. The fact that she's vocalizing, you know, greater political amb ambitions, that should horrify everyone because people like that who are proudly and openly fascists, you don't want them anywhere near power. But the fact that they want power so desperately tells you that they want to remake this country in their way. And it doesn't include you. Their vision excludes everyone but people like them. And that should horrify everyone as clownish as these buffoons may be. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.